Interestingly enough, there's a number of headlines around the team. Let's get right to the roster transaction. The Ford Niners mm. promoted today Janoris Jenkins and Tevin Coleman to the active roster. What's your read on on those two roster decisions? It seems like what Ambry Thomas just is just there anything to get Ambry anything to prevent Ambry Thomas from getting on the field, it seems like. I mean, he, Jenkins is obviously in front of him. Right. And Tevin Coleman, does that mean that some that they're worried about somebody else or who's going to be up on game day in the backfield? This is a tough one because the nine, your, your first reaction is, OK, they're going to use him. You, you, you call him up. You're going to use him. Well, it was either last week or the week before the Niners called up Kaboko Ture from the practice squad and then left him inactive. And I'm sitting there thinking, why would you do that? Why would you call him up? Oh, because as a courtesy to a veteran, you wanted to give him a game check. You get a lot more money on the active roster than you do in the practice squad. So it's either that Kyle intends on playing Tevin Coleman or he wanted to give him, give Tevin Coleman some money. What do you think? Um, I think he's I think Tevin Coleman is at this point for the 49ers still insurance. So it's yeah. probably to give fund him some, give get him some money. Because they I go way so. back. He might be inactive. Yeah. He, might, he probably I, will be inactive. That would be my guess. He's so far down the totem pole in, in the running game. I mean, there would be seven guys you would give carries to before him. There would be wide receivers you would give carries to before him. Yeah. I mean, I want to see. In, in fact, one of the things that I want to see in this game is I want to see Ray Ray McLeod run the football at least twice. I'd like to see two runs, Thank one you. in each half to Ray Thank Ray you. McLeod. Thank you. One screen, one run. Either way. Extended yeah, just, handoff, handoff, whatever. But he get the ball in the hands of he, you know, his favorite guy is Iverson. He and he reminds me of Iverson. I like he's that. He's slight, but he's the toughest guy on the field. You know what I mean? I like he's that. like he's like one of these guys that you can starch him with a big hit, and Ray Ray is is gonna take it. I mean, he's he he I mean he's a He's a tough football player, man. He really is. And he's playing really like the best football him. of his career. He is yeah. playing the best football of his he's career. fast. Yeah. I just, one thing, got to bring it up as a reverse jinx. He's had issues with ball security in the past. It's going to be a rainy day. He's got to yeah. be cognizant of that. Remember the Kyle Williams game, t- ten, what was that, 10, 11 years ago? Ugh. That was a rainy day, too. That was a soaking wet field. day, yeah. Soaking day, wet, wet field. Yep. Well, so. that's interesting. Yeah. Um, would you then say you'd like a game plan that's how much, like what is your splits in the backfield going to look like as far as McCaffrey, Mitchell, Mason, TDP, uh, Ray, right. Ray, what if you, if in an ideal world at the end of that game, what is the, what's the running back breakdown? Well, as as it, again, it depends on field conditions. Like it, it could be totally different game plans in the first half. It could be play action, pass first, get the ball to McCaffrey, Ayuk. Uh, and the route runners on the team. And then if you have a lead in the second half and it's raining, you could transition to Mitchell, Mason, uh, up the middle between the tackles, that kind of a game. I mean, you could play both styles, and that might be the way to handle it. That might be what you want to do. Um, we got this one from Brody Ni- Brody Nigel. It says, what would you guys do if you didn't do sports reporting? Hmm, that's a good one. Um, I'd be an astronaut. No, yeah, I don't know. me too. I have be no a, idea. Be a shepherd. I'm be, good at be, nothing be else. A field. I'm good at nothing. I don't know. <laughs> I have no skills. <laughs> I'd be te- I'd be teaching. Uh, maybe you know typewriter maybe maintenance. Teacher, yeah. yeah. At a junior college. No, I don't know. Yeah. Um, nothing good. Nothing good. I'd be getting into a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. Okay. Um, Interestingly enough, the 49ers have gotten a lot of draft picks because Robert Sala got a job, because mm-hmm. uh, Mike McDaniel got a job. and it Isn't looks, that their top pick next year, one of those comp picks from one I of those? Believe, I think I believe. so. Yeah. Uh, now, Crazy. D'Amico Ryans yeah. looks like he is on the doorstep to on his way out. Why do I say that? Because it seems like every team in football wants him. Um you know, the Cardinals, the Broncos, I guess the Panthers asked for permission. He doesn't want to be a Panther. Maybe he said no to that, but he's got multiple, multiple teams interested. Do you think D'Amico gets a job? And do you think who's the new coordinator next year? Who's a candidate? I mean, do you think that they'll go from within somehow? Do you think they'll pr- try to promote somebody from the ranks and keep the same defense? 
Or do you think they'll go get a veteran guy with experience? I mean, there's a lot of options. I'm not sold that he's going to get a head coaching job. And I just okay. can compare it to Sala. Sala, um, everyone thought he was going to get a head coaching job uh, during that Super Bowl run. But he got beat out for the job in, in – um, Cleveland by Stefanski. And I think the way people looked at Salah at that time was, man, you got the best front, like, four-man pass rush in the league. You don't have to do that much. How much is it you and how much is it the talent? Then next year, Nick Bosa went down and Robert Salah had a top-five defense without him. And people were like, okay, you're like, your your, uh, coordinator chops are established at this point. And he seemed like a good leader. D'Amico seems like an off-the-charts leader. But again, I mean, Pete Carroll said it this week. The Niners don't do a lot on defense. They don't try to fool you. It's just an overwhelming front four. And, you know, when that front four hasn't been overwhelming this season, the Niners' defense has looked vulnerable. So I, I'm a little – I wonder if D'Amico is going to get a head coaching job after two years as a coordinator or if he's going to need, like, one more year to prove himself. 